All of us have prospered in one way or another in many ways, but we often forget, we often forget just how we have prospered in the past because we are so caught up in the need of now. We're so involved in whatever it is that's drawing our attention now that we forget that we have prospered in the past. I found myself in just such a position one time. I was talking to a dear friend of mine, and this friend was always talking prosperity. And I didn't talk prosperity very much. I was always very involved in what I was doing, and I didn't talk very much about prosperity until we sat down and we began to talk. And she began to tell me about some of the prosperity experiences that she had had in her life. And I began to talk to her, and I began to unfold some of the things that had happened in my life. And they were just kind of flowing out as one thing came to mind, another thing came to mind, and another, and on down the line. And she just sat there, and she looked at me, and she says, wow, she said, you really ought to write a book or something on prosperity, because you really have developed a prosperity consciousness. Now, right at that moment, I had a need in my life. And I had become so involved with that need that I had forgotten about all the times in my life that I had prospered. But I began to think about that. Now, well, I have prospered in these ways. And the way that I find out how I have prospered is by taking a look, taking a look at each of those ways that I have prospered and then beginning to put them into operation in my life. Now, each of you have been given this morning an orange card, which I'm going to has, ask you to use later in your own private time to unfold the idea of demonstrations in your life. But I'm going to talk to you just for a few minutes about how I worked demonstrations, and then you can see exactly what it is that you have done in your life. Remember that things don't happen to you. They happen through you that every demonstration that you have made in your life has come to you by right of consciousness. It just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. It happened to you, through you, because you had established the mental equivalent, the mental equivalent for whatever was manifest in your world. It is yours by right of consciousness. The mental attitudes that you form, the creative actions that you took, everything that you did, Following the guidance, opening your mind, being and doing are the things that brought about prosperity in your life. And when you think about prosperity, always remember what we started off in this course with, that prosperity does mean financial prosperity, but it also means health of body. It also means peace of mind. It also means harmonious relationships and happiness in filling in and through your life. So when you begin to think about the things that have prospered you, you'll find many of those things are not just financial things, but are things which are what we call those intangibles, and some of them even not intangibles. I listed six things which I found were demonstrations in my life, and I listed more than that, but I came to these six things that I felt were probably the most important prosperity demonstrations that I had made. The very first one was graduation and ordination at Unity School. And you know, all the time that I was working through this activity of becoming a Unity minister, I really had to draw upon a particular quality within me. So I'd like for you to think about the qualities that enter into each of the experiences of your life but in this one particular life experience, the one that was important to me was faith, was faith. I had to activate all of the faith that I had to bring forth this desire, to bring forth this desire to become a unity minister. All the time I was here, I had to invest all of this living energy, this substance in this one idea, in this one idea, and I had to know that all the time that I was working in and through this, that God was in charge of my life, that God was in charge of my life. And many a time that I spoke that word, that God was in charge of my life. You know, I think we all have a desire. This was 
a desire of mine to be have the right companion, the right companion in my life. So I was seeking my right and perfect mate. I was affirming and desiring my right and perfect mate. I began to affirm this, that my right and perfect mate, the one that was mine by divine right, was coming to me quickly and peacefully. You know, you don't want somebody that's going to come really like a roaring lion. You want somebody that's going to come with all of this type of activity that is peaceful. And so I drew to me, through me, by right of consciousness, Frank Judici. I can remember talking to Leo Russell uh, at the time, and I was saying, Leo, how do you draw your right and perfect mate to you? And Leo said, well, you begin to know that you have a divine mate. One is that is yours by right of consciousness. And as you begin to affirm that, that person will move to you in time and space. And sure enough, about the time that I began to affirm this, Frank Judici started moving toward me in time and space. We compared notes and later found out that at the exact time that I began to affirm this, he too was reaching out for his right and perfect mate and we came together by divine appointment. So when you have that activity, you need to activate the faculty of love, love. You have to be willing to open yourself to love, to give love and to receive love. And you know, a lot of times we think we want something, but we're not really willing to open ourselves to love. We're not really willing to give. And the other side of the coin is that we're really not willing to receive. The next experience that I listed as a demonstration that was very important in my life was a healing of my body. I had experienced a physical uh, dis-ease, disease that had manifested after many, many years of, well, I don't know, I, I really was never an unhealthy person. When I was a kid, I had a lot of uh, childhood illnesses, but I was never really ill. And yet, one time when I thought I was really doing everything right, I found myself flat on my back, flat on my back with, a, uh, with an illness that had really uh, laid me out. And then when I saw this idea of healing that really could be worked, I thought, wow, what is it that needs healing in me? Because I have a manifestation in my body of pain, of real pain. And I need to have a healing. I need to have a healing. So what is happening? So as I lay there and I was thinking about this activity, I became aware that something was blocking the flow of energy in my body. And when I became aware of that, I became aware of the fact that there was a lot of things in my life that needed this activity. And that activity was forgiveness, forgiveness. Because there's nothing like the lack of forgiveness of self and others that will block the flow of spirit within you. So first of all, I began to forgive myself just as Myrtle Fillmore did for holding all of these thoughts which were blocking the flow of spirit. And then I began to forgive others for the offenses that I felt that they had done toward me in life and then I forgave myself for all of the things that ha I had done to offend others. And through this process, I experienced my healing because I followed it up with that quality which always have to follow forgiveness, love. I began to pour love into this part of my body temple and everything was dissolved, everything was released, and I experienced a total healing. The next thing that I worked with on a demonstration was buying my first car. Now, that may not sound uh, like a lot to a lot of you, but some of you, you may be identifying with this. But I remembered this incident of wanting to buy my first car. I had a real need for a car at that particular time. I had had uh, family cars when I was younger, and I hadn't driven for many, many years because when I first started to learn to drive, I was going down through a park with this friend of mine who was teaching me how to drive, a driving instructor. And as I was going through this park, I came around a curb, and here was a 10-ton truck coming around the other way. And he was in the middle of the road. And there was no way I could miss him. 
But I managed to sideswipe him and went off through the woods without hitting a tree, came back on on the road, and all I had done was manage to sideswipe the, uh, the truck and laid that back fender flat. Well, that was all right. It scared the liver out of me. But my dad, whose car it was, was not very loving about that flattened out fender. And so between the fear that I had experienced then and the reaction of my father, I didn't drive for many, many years. I didn't drive for many years, but I decided that I really needed a car and I really needed to drive. So I began to do what? Did I just run down to the nearest place and buy a car? No, you don't do that. You get ready. You get ready for that car. You begin to open yourself to that car. And I began to look around at all the types of cars that were available. I began to look at the used car lots. I began to look at new car lots. I began to look everywhere until I all of a sudden had a really good idea of what it was that I really wanted. As a matter of fact, every morning going to work and to from work, I rode in a car like I wanted. And this was a Valiant, was the very first one that they made in 1970, 60, excuse me, 1960 Valiant. And I thought, well, gee, this is a really nice car. And so I went around and looked at all the used car lots for that type of a car. And uh, one morning on the way to work, after I had been affirming and knowing that the right car at the right price was going to come to me, this, I told the driver, this, a man that I worked with, I said, I'm looking for a car. And he says, oh, you are? And I said, yes, I am. And he said, well, uh, what kind of a car do you want? And I said, well, I'd really like something like this one. You know, this is really a nice car. And I've been looking at cars like this. And he says, are you really interested in this car? And I said, yeah. And he says, well, I'll sell it to you. He says, I'm going to be moving, and I need a truck rather than a car. And he says, so I'm getting ready to sell this car. And he gave me a price. And that price was far below every one that I had looked at on the lot. And not only that, this man was a super top mechanic, and that car was in A1 condition. So I was able to buy the car at the right price, at the right time, with everything that I wanted on it. Because I knew that I had a desire, and you have to have a desire or a need, a need and a desire to get that which you want in your life. I found in my life that was very important was finding the right position. Before I came to uh, into the ministry, I was a statistician, uh, specializing in workload coordination and control and things like that. And so I began to know that as I was seeking this one position in Long Beach, California, that my position was seeking me. Just as I was seeking that position, my position was seeking me. So begin to know that. And as I did that and followed the guidance within me, I love to tell the story of taking a bus out to Terminal Island, <clears throat> riding on the bus and headed for the Long Beach Naval Air Station because I had decided I was going to work for the Navy and for the, air, for the air station. But as I was going along, I saw the sign employment office. I saw the sign employment office with an arrow and so I thought, oh, I've missed my stop. And I went on down to the end of the run and came back and got off by the employment office, found myself in the Long Beach Naval Shipyard. It wasn't the air station, but I decided since I was there, I would put my application in. And do you know that there were three positions for which I was uniquely qualified waiting? And I had my choice. I had my choice of one of the three because I knew that in finding this position that I was totally prepared. I was totally prepared. I had gotten my mind, my abilities, everything together so that when I was seeking that position, that position was really seeking me. As I followed my guidance, my guidance led me to the right place. You know, we all like to win something. One time, <clears throat> I won some giftware. I won some giftware. I know all of us have liked to win things like that, and I've won quite a few things in my life. I've always been very, quote, lucky, because I have always established a consciousness for this. That, but one of the things that I have found out about winning is that you need to have persistence. You need to have persistence. But you also have to have that winning feeling. 
You have to have that winning feeling. Because when I was listening to this radio program, and I listened to it often, and they were always giving away prizes, I began to get this winning feeling. I began to feel, hey, you know, I can win this. I know how to win this. I know how to do these things. I know how to uh, win. And so I persisted, persisted. And this, when I persisted this one evening, wow, the phone got through. They answered the other end of the thing. And guess who had the answer? Me. So I got the, <clears throat> and believe you me, the people that had been getting through before me did not know the answer. So it was one of those things where I was prepared. I was prepared to get the giftware and I did. You know, <clears throat> we need to write out, and you can use your orange cards at your own time and at your own leisure, to write out what you, how you have prospered in the past. To begin to check out what was the major quality that you needed to bring forth that manifestation. Then you need to write out a desire. You can write out, first of all, across the top, the ways that you have demonstrated. And then you can show what qualities were necessary in that. But then at the bottom, remember, we all have desires. We all have desires that we want to manifest in our life. So use the space at the bottom to write out the desires that you have that you want to see fulfilled in your life. Write out the quality that you know will bring them forth. And then begin to work on them.